on the shining river when we reach those golden bells for you and me. Don't you hear the bells now ringing? Don't you hear the angels singing? It's the glory, hallelujah, to believe in that far off sea forever. The shining river when we ring those golden bells for you and me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. When they ring those golden bells, ha. Huh? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second verse says, We shall know no sin, no sorrow in the heaven of tomorrow. When our bark shall sail beyond the silver sea, we shall only know the blessings of our Father's sweet caressing when they ring those golden bells for you and me. And no matter how difficult it is here, when we can look towards the future and know that he's going to caress us huh? glory to God we can live a life that is pleasing in his sight hallelujah oh glory to God hallelujah thank you Jesus our pastor will come to us now with prayer for this morning the altar is open if there's anyone here who is in need of prayer you can come to the altar I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour, I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. come bowing before you this morning Lord because we are in need of you every one of us here Jesus we are in need of you God Almighty the very breath that we breathe Lord is not ours it is on loan to us and so Lord we give you thanks this morning for our existence Hallelujah. god almighty we thank you for life Hallelujah. we thank you god for the energy that you have thank given you, unto Lord. us 
so that we were able to read here this morning. For those who drove, oh God, those who rode, those who walked, but God, we are here safely. And so we give you thanks. We thank you for the blessings of the previous week. God, you have been with us. Oh, God Almighty. There were so many times, Lord, when we thought that maybe a vehicle would have hit us down. But God Almighty, you were there with us. Oh, God Almighty. There were times, Lord, when in driving, oh, God, some of us believe, oh, God, that we would have an accident. But Jesus, you were there. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, so we come with grateful hearts before you. There are some of us, Lord, who were sick, and we, never, we weren't sure we would have been able to make it here today. But we thank you for your healing. Lord, we thank you. And so we come in your presence today. Lord God Almighty, as your people walk to the altar. And Lord, I am on the altar as well, Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, because we are all in need of you. Oh, God Almighty. Lord Jesus, I pray at this time for Pastor Forbes' um, wife, who is quite ill at this time. God Almighty, you have seen that he lost a wife a few years ago. Lord, he now has a different wife, and she's very sick. God Almighty, I pray at this time that you may visit that home wherever they are now, Jesus. Lord, we know they are in England. You know exactly where they are at this point in time. I am asking that you visit them in a marked way, Jesus. I pray that you touch Sister Forbes today. Lord, you know what is wrong with her, Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, I pray that you may have mercy. Lord, she needs you at this time. The family needs you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor Forbes needs you, Jesus. Oh, blessed God Almighty, I pray that you may be with them at this time. Lord God Almighty, I pray at this time, Lord God, for one Mrs. Street, who is the sister, oh God Almighty, of Evangelist of Scarlet, who lost her husband on Tuesday. I pray that you may comfort her, Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, I pray, Lord, for the entire family members, oh, God Almighty, who are really feeling the hurt at this time. I pray for the brother of the deceased, oh, God, who is a twin brother, and he's not taking it well. Oh, God Almighty, because his twin brother has passed on. I pray for him at this time, Lord, Jackie Street. Oh, God Almighty, be with this family, I pray, Holy Father. Oh, God Almighty, and comfort them. You know how to comfort people, Jesus. And so I pray that you may comfort them, Lord God Almighty. I pray also, Jesus, for the family of Deaconess Dennis who oh, lost another niece. Oh, God Almighty, I pray, God, that you may comfort the family at this time, Lord. Oh, God, they have just buried the two family members. Oh, God Almighty, and they are on the way to bury another one. I pray for their comfort at this time, Jesus. Oh, God, and for those that I don't even know about, oh, God Almighty, I pray for them. I pray also, Lord, oh, God Almighty, for Sister Blair's niece, who is also sick at this time. Oh, God Almighty, and is asking for prayer. Lord God Almighty, 
sicknesses, Lord Jesus. Oh, blessed Redeemer, we know that you are the healer. Oh, God Almighty. And you heal in different ways. Oh, God Almighty. But I pray at this time, Holy Father. I pray, Jesus. Oh, God Almighty. As the healer, I pray for your healing at this time. Lord, for all those who are not well. Lord God Almighty. I pray at this time, Lord, for missionary Nelson, who was not well last week when she was at church. Oh, God Almighty. But we thank you for touching her, Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, she's not here today. But I know, Lord, that you are working on her. Lord God, I pray for all the shut-ins at this time. Lord, you know them. Oh, God Almighty, you know the names of all of them. Oh, God Almighty, I pray for Missionary Gilzine, Missionary Rush, Missionary Reed. Oh, God Almighty, oh God, I pray that you may be with them in a marked way. Oh, God Almighty. And so now, Lord, as we have come into your sanctuary to worship you, I pray that you may help us, Lord, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, God Almighty. And if there is any among us or will be among us, oh, God Almighty, who is not yet saved, I pray for them, Jesus. Oh, God Almighty, that they may see, oh, God, how necessary it is to accept you as their personal savior. We give you thanks for everything, Lord. And I put the service in your hands right now. Please lead us, Lord, and help us to be willing to follow your leading in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we glorify your name. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. We glorify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, God. That name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We'll read for our own morning scripture, Psalm 121. We'll read alternate verses. Hallelujah. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free.
be consoled this morning that his eyes are on the sparrow and he watches over us. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 121, we read alternate verses. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Thou shalt not smite thee by thee, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Be encouraged today that the Lord is our keeper. God bless you, Evangelist Wilson, with the notices at this time. Because I'm happy as I say, because I'm It's a consolation this morning that Jesus Christ watches over us. And in the same way he can take care of the sparrow, have no doubt that he can take care of us, his children. Greetings to Pastor Pastor Simmons, all the other ministers, saints, everyone, visiting friends, little children, I greet you in Jesus' name. Our order of service for this week will be a bit different because this week is Good Friday. And so pastor will let us know what the structure will be. So we'll have our prayer meeting on Monday night. And then from there, pastor will direct us as to how the rest of the week will happen. Bless the name of the Lord. This afternoon, after, immediately after service, you know that um, the Sunday school program will be on the 31st, which is Sunday coming. And so this afternoon, there will be rehearsal for the Sunday school classes. So we ask that you remain after service for Sunday school rehearsal. We have invitation from Beulah Church of Jesus Christ, Apostolic, that's the Broadleaf District in Manchester. The pastor is overseer, Winston King, and he's inviting us to, the, to their 51st annual Holy Convocation under the theme, Unleashing the Joshua and Caleb Anointing, Possessing the Promise. This will be on Wednesday, from Sunday the 24th of March through to Wednesday the 27th. And so service start at 7 p.m. So that's Broadleaf in Manchester. The 24th starts today and goes through until Wednesday, the 27th. Linstead Pentecostal Tabernacle, that's Bishop Frank Otto. And the saints, they're inviting us to harvest and gathering and youth week services. Harvest and gathering is the 24th at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. And the theme for harvest and gathering is go gather, it's harvest time. Um, 
this 24 this evening right this evening at 5 p.m and um youth week starts the 25th through to the 29th and it, the youth week theme is empowered to go so harvest is this evening at five and then youth week starts on monday the 25th through to the 29th with the theme empowered to go international apostolic ministry that's waterloo saint santa cruz the presiding bishop is bishop agri scott you know um international apostolic ministry from bishop evans right that same assembly they'll be having their 33rd annual easter convocation and it starts on friday the 29th of march through to april 1. the theme is write the vision press into destiny so that's iam international apostolic ministry their convocation is the 29th through to the 1st of April with the theme, write the vision, press into destiny. Bethel United Church of Jesus Christ Apostolic, that's Faces Street, Maypen. They will be having gospel explosion and rally on Friday, April the 26th at 7 p.m. It's an annual fundraising event and they are inviting us to come to their assembly with an item to participate in this event. So that's Bethel, Maypen, that's Elder Errol Lee. He's a pastor there and he's inviting us to their gospel explosion and rally on the 26th of April. Refuge Temple, 65 and a half Max Hill Avenue. They will be having, they're inviting us to a major fundraising event entitled fun and laughter with a play and the play is entitled the rapture is near who will make it in the cost for the ticket is 2500 jamaican dollars and it covers meal and entry into the play this will be on the 26th of april and you will get more details as it comes closer to the time that's the name of the lord and we have um Bethel Temple, Apostolic Moors, Clarendon, they'll be having their women's one day convention, and this will be on Good Friday, March the 29th. Uh, service starts at 6.30 p.m. The evening service starts at 6.30 p.m. That's pastor and missionary Brandon Mori. They are the pastors of the, the leaders of the church at Bethel Temple, Moorestone. Clarendon. So the women's department won the women's convention on a Good Friday at 6 30. <laughs> at 6 30 p.m. in Moore's Clarendon. That's the name of the Lord. And we have coming up. Coming up is our Faith Temple Pentecostal 11 Philip Road will be having their Youth Crusade 2024. And this will be on March 31st through to April 4th. The theme is Sanctified for the Battle. Experience the Overflow. Put your hands together for the beautiful theme. We have speakers in house and guest speakers coming in. Remember, it is March 31st through to April 4th. Easter Monday is one of the highlights of the day, and it's April 1, the full day session, starting at 10.30 with the teaching topic, the Shekinah glory of God. Are you a conveyor? That's the name of the Lord. You President Evangelist Ingrid Baker, and of course, our beautiful, lovely host, Pastor, Pastor A.P. Simmons. Bless the name of the Lord with evangelistic service starting at 7 p.m. Ensure we are on a mission for soul. Ensure that you invite persons out. And on Good Friday, you will get your small invitations so that we can distribute same to the community and others around. Bless the name of the Lord. And remember, 
the precursor to crusade is always our annual sunday school program which starts on the 31st of march at 4 30 p.m and where you have all the sunday school classes will be sharing an item in honor and glory to god please bear those dates in mind bless the name of the lord and as the weeks as the days go by i will Check. send out reminder in the whatsapp group please stand at this time while it's my pleasure to call on our pastor pastor ap simmons oh, just before just before pastor comes is there any birthday celebration i didn't get the list but is there anybody celebrating birthday coming this week we, we our sunday school student we sang happy birthday to him stand our Sunday school student who is celebrating his birthday. Today is your birthday, right? Yes. Put your hands together for our Sunday school student. And we sang happy birthday for him already in the Sunday school class. Is there anybody else celebrating in this week? That's it. At this time, our pastor. I'm on the battlefield Hallelujah. for my Lord. I'll fight till I die. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Please be seated. Greetings to District Elder Myers, Elder Davis, Missionary Rebotham, Evangelist Myers, Evangelist Green, all other ministers, other saints in the sanctuary. And online, I greet you all in Jesus' name. I give God thanks for another privilege in his temple. Another privilege to be alive. That is a privilege to be alive. So many persons are dying. And it's a privilege that I can be in here and not in the hospital it's a privilege and we must regard it a privilege you know many times we take things for granted but we shouldn't take things for granted it's a privilege oh bless the lord happy to see uh, miss joyce yes happy to see miss joyce she buried her husband two weeks ago yes two saturdays ago right she miss joyce from across the way there whose husband had died yes right so she buried her husband in um, clarendon two weeks ago happy to see you miss joyce all right um let us continue to pray for 
Sister Forbes, she is really um, quite ill. And um, we are aware that um, Pastor Forbes lost his first wife about three years ago, somewhere there. More than that, yes, more than that, yeah. Yes, some years, some years ago. Okay, and then he remarried, and this wife is now not well. So let us make sure we continue to pray for them. All right. Now, El Evangelist Welsh and Family, and Evangelist Baker and Family are gone to hark us all today to attend the christening ceremony of Sister Shauna Palmer's baby. <laughs> oh, bless the name of Jesus. I, I, <laughs> I am the person who put on the ceremony too. Because if people are, you know, different families are going, it has got to be a christening ceremony. Oh, yes. Right. Um, I think that must be the first grandchild of Pastor Palmer. So I would imagine it's a grand thing. Yes. It is a grand thing. Yes, 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 yes. So... They are making it a grand thing. So they are gone to be with them. That's why they are not here today. They reported to me that um, they were going, and so I have announced it. All right. Um, Friday, Good Friday, we, if we live to see Good Friday, and if the Lord doesn't come before, we plan to have Good Friday service. Okay? Now, generally, it begins at 12. It's three hours from 12 to 3. Um, generally, they say the service is held for the three hours that Jesus was on the cross. Three hours. Right? So it's from 12 to 3. And so we are inviting all those who can come along. There are some persons who accepted the Lord as their Savior on Good Friday, at a Good Friday service. Right? So come along and invite somebody to come along. 12 to 3. And generally, after that service, we generally have rehearsal, the Sunday school rehearsal, right? We have the Sunday school rehearsal, the last rehearsal. So, although there will be rehearsal this afternoon after this service, remember now, on Friday, we'll be having the last rehearsal. All right, so come along, Good Friday. Right? Come along and do the service and especially, no, I was going to say especially if you have a part to play in it. Everybody, please make an effort to be here. All right. And of course, um, well, in my prayer, I did say about a Deaconess Dennis. Now, Deaconess Dennis has another niece who died and so she is gone to I don't know if it's my baby this time but she is gone to um, today is the grave digging and um, she seemed to be the head cook and bottle washer where the family is concerned and so she is gone down there today that's why she is not here now, I notice you haven't seen Sister Faye Clark here this morning. Yeah. 
And when she's not here, she's missed. She's really missed. Yes. Guess what? Sister Clark left for the United States of America Woo! yesterday. Yes, <laughs> yes, Sister Clark went to the United States, and of course, she, um, she texted to let me know that she reached safely. Oh, yes. She deserves the break. She is really a hard-working person, and she deserves the break. She deserves the break. And so let's continue to pray for her. So crusade is coming up. And um, all plans are in place. And the things that are not in place, um, the, the, the plans are there to put them in place. Right. So we look forward to youth crusade. And whether we are youth or not, we are supposed to be at youth crusade amen? amen all right i would like to um well maybe i will decide on who and who i need to meet um for just a very short meeting a suggestion at the end of the service i'll meet you I don't remember if there was anything else that Evangelist Wilson said that I would see. Okay. Well, generally, we have service on this in the Monday night prayer meeting and the Tuesday night service, but there no service on the Thursday night. No service on the Thursday night. So Monday night, Tuesday night, yes but no service on Thursday night. Now, Evangelist Welch went abroad to visit his wife, to spend a little time with his wife, because his wife celebrated her birthday. And so it was just proper for him to go abroad and spend a little time with her. And that was what he did. Well, he has taken back And base, this is a box, but I see a picture on it with four mics. Yes, so I assume that four mics are in there. I'm going to ask us to stand while we ask District Elder Myers to come forward and consecrate them to the Lord. Let me just say that Brother Shavon also is abroad. I forgot to write it down, and so I forgot. He went abroad, he said, for a very short stay. Bless the Lord. Well, I will be dedicated to the service of the Lord, and we are sure that they are going to be for the benefit of the kingdom. Elder. Hey, yo, oh, bless the Lord. Lord, we give you thanks and praise again for your goodness. We give you thanks for all the gifts that you would have given for your work. Lord, this is a year for evangelism as it relates to this church. And this microphone set is here, Lord, just to amplify the voices that try to worship and adore you and give you praise so that everybody can hear 
clearly what is being said about you. So at this time, Lord, I dedicate these microphones with it, their attachments to you and to the gospel so that it may be propagated to all. God, I dedicate them. I pray, dear God, that you will keep them maintenance free and that, Lord Jesus, my God, we will always use them to your honor and to your glory. Bless again the use of them and the persons who would use them for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord, everybody. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are on the king's business. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. No, because we have our practice this afternoon, we are making every effort to ensure that we dismiss on time so we can get through all of that. So at this time, we're going to go straight in our testimony service. We ask Sister Lindsay to come forward. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord. This morning we thank God for another beautiful day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We are here to rejoice and be glad. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I will enter in his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter in his walls with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord our God has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Testimony, Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. So much.
Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless my Father. Amen. Greetings to everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. I am standing here today to give the Lord thanks for all that he do to, he, to me. He delivered again. You know, Friday, when we leave here from practice, it's just a hope to go to Practice is time to go to Mandeville. I did not know that it was so late, believe you me. And when I reached all the way and she's um, to let off these two and the other next one up at the top, I didn't know that it was so late. I don't see nobody on the road but me alone. I'm just who minute I'm going on and my way home. Anyway, thank be to God and take me home safely. But the devil lose again. When I go home, no one, everything is up asleep. During the course of the night, God wake me up out of my sleep, but I did not know what I was looking for in the house. But like I catch a vice, but I cannot pick up the vice as yet because I was in my sleep. And when I listen to this, my daughter hear, but you she hosty, she can hardly hear a fire. My dear, I just want to tell you, it was the last day that I under would see me here. It was in the mercy of God, but the devil lose again. I said, when we home, no one they know. But my son-in-law in England, he opened up a small little business on the top of the house that my daughter not working so she can finance herself and buy little things and get her. She can go on and so on. Other people come in there at all time, all in the morning and in the evening and whatever it is. But we didn't know what the devil had in plan or what to ever it is. But what I realized, and when we realized, we hear fire. We say, I turn fool. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. So I don't know how to jump over one pan with water. And then now, she said, did she give me the key in my hand? I don't know where the key is. I don't know where. Because generally that gate, the night, it didn't lock. It didn't lock. It didn't lock all the while, but it locked that night. And what do you think happened? Is thief come in, go to the place, rub all whatsoever they can do. And then afterward, light the place. And the first in my life I ever witnessed fire so. But when you look outside, you see people like how you that look from the, 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 the sitting in the scene as everybody around with the water. All they call in the big grade, you only hear the fire. Woom, woom. And after you hear the thing, they must mash up and bust up and say, and when police come out, they are all along the way, and they call a different grade with them. One gone different way, and one come the other way. When that one come, and in, all in, you could even reach near to you know, draw out the hose and start flash water along the way. But one thing I know, there's no life lost. But every, every material thing, it is gone. But God never make anything worse happen to it because up the top is concrete, but down here. So God 
does it again. He delivers again. So I just want to thank God for his deliverance again. That my life. Yes. Yeah. You see, when I see the fire, hear me. God, you burn me out. Oh, me, I go go mandible. But didn't know what am I saying. But through it all, I have learned to trust in Jesus. I pray for me in Jesus' name. I say. My soul say yes, yes, yes. My soul say yes, yes, yes. My soul say yes to the bleeding lamb. My soul say yes, yes, yes. My soul say yes, yes, yes. My soul. Everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. First, I must greet the Holy Spirit, who is ahead of my life, our pastors, ministers, and saints, everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning, I want to give the Lord thanks for his keeping care and his tender mercy towards me, and that he has taken me over the byway, the highway, and the hedges. In the morning, I walk um, from home to work. It's only if rain is falling. Um, I take the taxi or if I have load when I'm coming back. Because the exercise is right close to the main. And you know, each morning before I leave the house and when I'm doing my devotion in the morning, I always put myself before the byway and the hedges to keep me from all danger and from all accident from consistent dogs and you know the Lord has done so thus far because um it was last week Saturday a lady that I know very well standing at her gate she have a lawn I never see a lawn pretty so yet and green and she was there walking it and a vehicle just come and hit her but she didn't die same time she died this Sunday so I always give God thanks to taking me back and forward because this is no job because you don't know when you're gonna go and what the Lord to black out the seen and the unseen and he has done so for me so today I want to give him thanks for his many mercy and that he will continue to keep me over the barrier and the hedges. Amen. God bless, him, Jesus. bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Testimony, please. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Greetings to our pastor, all our ministers. Our beautiful choir, musician, God bless you all. Happy to see you all. Today I just want to be grateful to the Lord and give God thanks. I'm just here just to say something to the brethren. You may see me going and going and going. I'm feeling a lot of pain, but I just want to let you know last year 
this time, or maybe before, because we'd have the um, Sunday school department. Everybody realized, oh, and that day, Sister Hopi and Elder Davis, they see what I did in the Sunday school thing. But I don't know if I will be able, because this time, my hand is not able to do what I want to do. Today, I just want to say to each and every one, when you hear pastor, anybody saying, praise the Lord and lift up your hand, you got to enjoy it and don't take it for granted. Saints Amen. of God, Amen. I've been to therapy a lot of time. Friday was the, I went there Friday. It was such a hard time for me Friday because the thing that I done on Friday, that was the time when I realized how important, I know everybody is important, you know, but the time when the, doc, when the man said I have to do one thing for the hand. And saints, I'm telling you, if you know what I've been through on Friday with this arm, when the man gave me one of the things to do, he said this is the, the most dangerous one. Saints, this when I do the first, he said 60. 60 one way, 60 the other way. He put it at the thing. Saints, when I do the first 10, I think my shoulder, everything leave off. I think it's just one hand I have because where I was up to go. Saints of God, don't take it lightly. You see, we take things for granted, but we don't know until when. Saints of God, my hand is killing me. I can't lift it up like how I see where it go. I can't, it can't go nowhere else than right here. Everybody know you used to see me worshiping and praising God. You know it's one hand now. So saints of God, please don't take things for granted appreciate what you have you know when you're going to know is when you're reaching that place where they call it physiotherapy chains of god i see baby dear friday my belly move i see elderly i see young people just learning back to walk and i say god this is just a testimony for me because when i look and see young people just start to walking back they have a thing when i say the man i'm not one of belong this is a elder Elderly man, he have a, I don't know if it was a stroke he get. The lady strap him up. He can't get up, you know, and you know what she do? She use the belt and she lift him up out of the chair where he was sitting and tell him to hold on and, and said, it's a baby walk back that again. He couldn't get up by himself. She strap him with a belt and she lift him by his back with a belt and the man could hardly stand up the man and say, hold here, hold there at a certain way. You could see the man, you could see the in the man back the man cannot stand up and if you see you know when you go in there you have to in there to see the experience what i'm saying sense of god is not an easy place in there talking about hospital i don't know if it's a hospital that i don't know what it is but the, inst the thing that they have to do your body and to work out your body when you come out you come like your breath is going to leave your body friday was the worst for me i'm telling you saints but because I know somebody was praying for me. When I time I think my heart was just going boop, boop, boop. I have to stop. I couldn't do the 60 one way and the 60 the another way. And then he said, after I do the 60, I have 60 more to do with the other way, with the other thing. For me, I have to bring up the thing and bring it back down. Saints of God, I'm not lying. I couldn't do it. My heart was just boop. Remember, it's my heart string, you know, going boop, boop, boop. So when he finished, I said, take my pressure. He said, you don't have to take any pressure. I said, thank you. I will go and take my pressure somewhere. If you say, if my heart raised, went up, and my pressure went up. Sense of God is not a joke. I'm telling you some serious thing in that place, you know. When you have to work out your body, it's not you, you know. It's the thing that works in your body. It's like an electric that shock you. And still, see my hands. You see where my hand can go? Just pray for me in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Any more testimony? Thank you, Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. This afternoon, I'm giving God thanks for his goodness. You know, a simple thing um, happened to me, and it just proved to me that sometimes um, God can answer a very simple prayer. I was on a taxi coming from... Um, Papine going into, was going to town. And when I took the taxi, by the time it drove off, the music that started to play, it, it, was, uh, uh, um, it was as if I was in an anatomy class. 
He was telling me about the varied body parts, but not in languages that is can be repeated. And so I sat in the, when I sat in the taxi and I heard, I said, Jesus Christ. I just called out the name of Jesus. I, said, I just started to call on the Lord because you can't tell them when they are driving you to turn it down. I was trying to indicate and say, Trevor, can you turn on the music? He barely touched the button. And I just started to call on the name of the Lord, you know. The man turned around to me and said, lady, you want to take another vehicle? I said, thank you, Jesus. And I was able to come out of the car because... There are situations when you tell them to stop, they want to curse you and to charge you yeah. for the point. But God would have it that he heard. When I called on the name of Jesus, the man couldn't take it. Because I was right behind him. I couldn't take on that kind of music to go to town. You know, I couldn't make nobody see me coming out of that car with them kind of music. My, the, I was ashamed of the, and I wasn't singing those songs. And so I thank God for answering that simple prayer. That the man just turned around to me, come and said, Lady, you want to take another car? I said, Thank you, Jesus. And I just fly out of the car quickly. Today I'm Thank grateful you, to God. Thank you, Lord. I know what Thank prayer you, can do. God bless. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Any more testimony? Worship the Lord, praise the Lord Jesus. Only you, God, can do what you can do, God. We worship your name and honor you, Jesus. Lord, we lift you up and magnify your name, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised, God. From everlasting to everlasting, you remain the same, Jesus. And we bow down and worship you, Jesus, mighty man of war. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lion of Judah. Lord, we bow down and worship you.
most of the, the, the experience of the east side get most of it. And I just came out, the policeman came, and he said to him, you were speeding. He was frightened himself because he couldn't even get to come out of the taxi. And brethren, I opened the door and I come in and I said to the other passengers, you see what God did? You see what God did? And they say, a, a lady, she said to me, say, thank God, because the policeman said it could be worse. So I'm here to tell you that God saves, he keeps, and he's satisfied. Amen. And I want to tell Amen. Satan that God did it again for me. And he, is, he lose, he lost. Amen. I'm still here to give him thanks and praise. Virgin, let us pray for one another because you, prayer goes a far away. Yes, God bless you. Yes, the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord? Yes, the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord? Yes, the Lord. Thank you. Pastor Simanda, thank you for the prayer that you have sent off for my son Daniel. You know, when he leave Jamaica to Canada, when he leave, when he reached there, he get his um, work permit that he can work in Canada like four hours a day because he have to go to school. And you know, he meets so much people. Right now he's in church. Because he's supposed to leave school now next month. And what he's doing, you know, he can work right over the world is what he's doing right now. So next month now he's going to work with a company. A big company over there. So I really glad for the prayer Pastor Simon because when he reached Canada, he said, you know, when he at the airport, a lady come and ask him if he is Daniel. And he said yes. So she take him to where he's going to stay. And when he reached there now, he, um, there was a next man at that same house where he's going to stay from Brazil. And he came on him, went to the Tuesday, and he searched and he found his school. And the guy found his school because he, the guy from Brazil, he, he don't speak English. But he come to Canada to learn English. And God was so good that Daniel find the school and he start the school the Tuesday. Because God was on his side and the prayer that you really sent out for him. Because he get a work over there. He working with a company that he leave out like two o'clock a morning time. Can you have to reach work by five. And then no, after he leave five o'clock, start work five till about nine. And then he leave to school from nine to three. From nine to twelve. So we, I have to re and right now Amen. he's going to church. Amen. And the church people Thank you, love him. Thank you, they love Amen. him so much over there. Amen. Thank Sometimes you. they give him food. They, they love him so much. Right now he's saying he's supposed to have a song when they're going to sing this morning and the choir. Amen. And he's doing his school work and doing everything. And he's very happy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So happy. So I have to give everybody who sent out the choir for him. Thank yes, you, Lord. Jesus. And thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all for your testimonies this morning. I just want to give God thanks with this um, song. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here of salvation, purchase of God, filled with His goodness and blessed with His love. This is my story. This is my song. Praise.
This is my story. This is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. Bless the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. This is my story. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Sister Lindsay, for leading the testimony service. At this time, we ask Evangelist Myers to come and bless the day's offering. Please stand, everyone. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Asking everyone to stand at this time. Mighty man of war, we bow down and we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today to worship and to lift up your holy name. We want to thank you for your provision. All our needs you have supplied and we are grateful today david said he has never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread we want to thank you lord that we do not have to go around begging thank you jesus for providing and as we are here today to give back a portion of what you have given to us we ask that you will bless it, sanctify it, O oh God, that it will be used for your honor and your glory in Jesus' name. Oh! 
the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There are so many different seas sometimes we encounter. But we are glad today that he rolled the sea away. Bless the name of the Lord. Whether it's a red, black, blue, whatever it is. But we can depend on him. Hallelujah. That's what matters most. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to ask the ministers this time to come with their contribution. Bless the name of the Lord. And we ask. District Elder Myers, and he will be followed by Elder Davis, followed by Evangelist Phillips, in that order. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Greetings to our pastor, our moderator, Elder Davis, and to all the other ministers, saints, greetings in Jesus' name. God, thanks for this a privilege to be alive. You know, so many people have died. Some natural causes, some by accident, some by all different kind of way. But I'm grateful to God. Oh, praise the Lord. And just to know that myself and um, Evangelist Philip and and just Baker went to Holy Ghost Power Ministry, Brother Wood Service Wednesday. And um, it was a blessing that we were there. Oh, praise the Lord. We give God thanks. But let us continue to pray, you know, for our men. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, I was heartened when I were there Wednesday to see the amount of men. Oh, praise the Lord. It was the last night of the, their main fellowship, and the church was full. Oh, praise the Lord. It is I give God thanks. So let us, brethren, we have to continue to trust the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. God loves us. And in spite of what we are going through, the things that affect us, our body and thing. It's a, have nothing to do with us. What we are going through in life, we call sickness, we have nothing to do with it. But we have to deal with it. It caused from Adam. What happened in the Garden of Eden is what we are going through today. We shouldn't have the, at this age, feeling any pain. We should be not living in any discomfort. Oh, hallelujah. It is because of sin why today we are struggling with this kind of discomfort. Oh, praise the Lord. But God promised to help us. So we can be heartened by his word. That he said in the time of trouble. He will be a very present help. Oh praise the Lord. The discomfort is going to come. The headaches is going to come. Oh hallelujah. And there are times when he's going to heal us of our sicknesses. Because the scripture declared that he sent forth his word. To heal our sicknesses. And our disease. Oh, praise the Lord. So we can be comforted that God is able to keep us. Don't get worried and troubled about, we're going to feel pain. But God promises are sure. Oh, hallelujah. Hi. Have a friend. A precious friend. Oh, how. He loves me, he says his love will never end. Oh, how he loves me, oh, how he Why I only cry. 
Our pastor, Pastor Simmons, District Elder Myers, Evangelist Phillips, Evangelist Myers, Missionary Robotham, our Sunday School President, Evangelist Green, our choir, all other ministers, saints, friends, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Whether you are in the building or you are on um, social media platform, I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus. The only name that saves. Irrespective of what we may think, it's really the only name. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ uh, why we are saved and why we will make it into glory. Isaiah 60 starts out by saying, Arise and shine, for the light has come. You know, once light has started to shine, it gives um, illumination to darkness. It causes you to find your way. It causes you to walk without stumbling. It leads you in the place that you need to go. And today, as we are here, and the illumination is there, and we are able to see, irrespective of the fact that we may have sickness, irrespective that we grieve, as I hear Pastor talk about, um, if I, uh, Missionary Dennis, Deaconess Dennis, sorry, about our situation again. I, I hear so many testimonies, Sister Lola talking about our harms, um, our hand cannot be lifted. But because the light has come, irrespective of all of those situations, yes, you feel the pain. Or you feel the pinch. You feel the economic situation. You even feel the political situation. But the light has come and you know that irrespective of what may be happening to you, what you may be going through, what your loved ones may be feeling, feeling or it affects you. But the light has come and this is only that which is going to perfect you so that in the long run, you and I will make it in. So we are not worried about the kind of things that are going on now because we know we have hope. We know that there is glory for us. And thank you, Jesus. I am saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the church praise the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. I just want to greet our pastor, all the honorable ministers, choir, those online, everyone in Jesus' name. You know, today being Palm Sunday, and as Jesus rode into Jerusalem upon that donkey, so to speak, 
They cry out, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. I just want to salute the Lord God this afternoon. When I listen to his sister, he's in that testimony. I remember nearly a year ago, I was really burned. We were burned out, so to speak. And I'm checking out nearly a million dollars I've lost. My, me personally, I'm checking the values of the things. But we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundant. Sister, you're going to come up better. Because I'm standing here as a miracle. I came back better in the name of Jesus Christ. It's God. And you know, thank God for the fasting and prayer. Um, as headquarters people, we have to live like headquarters people. As headquarters ministers, we have to live like headquarters ministers. Saints also, because all the agonists, agonists, people agonists, they are watching us. Every move we make, they are emulate us. They pattern us. Thank God for the fasting and prayer. You know, about a week ago, I, I'm telling the testimony, it hurts, it feels away. Um, we were walking along Walton Park Road, myself and my gentleman who carried goods for us. And I saw this young man at the bar right there. And it's about the Monday or the Tuesday there, but I stopped. Something just stopped to him. I said, I, said, I said to him, young man, it's time to go to church now. It's time to give up. I passed him regularly and healed him, but this time, something said stop. And I spent about three or four minutes with him. I came to Sister Night's funeral also. When I, the Friday, some shooting went on down there. And when the, the drink man that what was with me when I testified, he said, listen, you know, the same young man that you spoke to, he is the one who they killed. He shook me up. You know, and sometimes when God says to do something, do it. We don't know why, but do it. Do it. But, you know, I just want to give God the glory. Let us just live a life. Let us, God is saying to me, is that how much we preach? Is that how much we sing? Is how much we live? Because you see, Enoch is my favorite Bible character, Enoch. I, 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 even before I become a, became a Christian, I, I look at his lifestyle. Says, if you live a life, you know, you can just disappear, you know. You know what I'm saying to you? You don't have to wait for the rapture. If you live holy and clean, God will use you to do excellent, to, to do more than you even think of. Because all you need a clean vessel to use. And there is no limit in God. Just walk right, live right, and God will do a work in you that you even you yourself shock. We give him the glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the name of the, of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The song that Elder um, Myers sung, he says, I have a friend, a precious friend. Oh, how he loves me. You know, most times we hear people saying, I love you, I love you, but very conditional. Very conditional. If you don't have the money to give, if you don't have the gifts to give, and if you can't give, of course, the body is going to be involved as well. And if you're not doing that, you're not experiencing uh, what they want you to do, you won't get what they have. Bless the name of the Lord. What the songwriter says, Oh, how he loves me. Pause for a while and think of the many times when we have gone against his will. The many times we have turned against him, we have done our own thing, yet his love never ends. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how he loves me. He says his love will never end. Oh, how he loves me. Sometimes when I hear people talking about me love you, I just shake my head. One of these people really understand what the word love means. As soon as you may say something that they don't like, the love is gone. They don't see you anymore. They don't love you anymore. The gift's not coming anymore. The rose is not coming anymore. The phone calls stop. The hellos don't come anymore. 
but with Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His love never ends. I would today that we rely on the love of Jesus that supersedes all other love. Thank you, Jesus. Evangelist Myers, and she will be followed by Missionary Robotham. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour, I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee, oh, I need thee, oh, I need thee, hey, glory, every all, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I greet our pastor, Pastor Simmons all other ministers and everyone else in the only saving name, the name of Jesus. The songwriter declares, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. If ever a time we need the Lord, surely we need him now. If we see what is happening in the world today, we have so much distraction. And if we don't, if we are not careful, we forget the Lord. The time is so busy. You are late for work. You get up. Don't bother to pray because I'm, I am late. When I get to work, I will pray. When you get to work, you never made that prayer. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. The devil is out like a roaring lion. He realized the time is near, you know. So he's out seeking who we can devour. And if we are not careful, huh, then we will be devour. Let us be careful. Let us be careful. Of where we go, what we say, what we watch, what we read. If ever a time we need the Lord, surely we need him now. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. May God help us that we will do the right thing in Jesus' name. everybody greetings to our pastor and ministers in the precious name of Jesus today I'm really grateful to be in the house of the Lord one more time you know I have high pressure so I was sent to the doctor to, um, um, to heart foundation to get some chest so I got a ride and Wednesday and I went and after taking the pressure they, they, they look at me and say the pressure is well high. I went to I went to the senior nurse and she says she's a, a little younger than I am and she has high pressure and she's supposed to take her tablets and so 
But today I'm grateful that I'm here. I'm walking like a living dead, but I am not dead. <laughs> so today I am grateful to God because he has been good to me. You know, everything I need or whatever, God supply my need. And he give me a thing that I don't have to fear. I'm not fearing. God is always with me. And you know, I love God. I love him. As the man says, God, I love you, God. Yes, because sometimes the things that God has done for us and keeping you. The, the lady look at me and she look at me and she said, like, if you are a living dead, because she said, you know what can happen to you? You can drop dead, you can get a stroke or something like that. Because I know God is my friend. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. At this time, I call on our pastor. Fellowship with Jesus. Fellowship divine. Oh, what blessed sweet communion. Jesus is a friend of man. A friend when a sickness lays me low. A friend when death draws near. A friend as through the veil I go. A friend to help and cheer. Friendship with Jesus. Fellowship divine. Oh, what blessed sweet communion. Jesus is a friend of mine. A friend when the pain. A friend when death is past. A friend to greet on heaven shore. A friend when home at last. Hallelujah. Friendship with Jesus. Oh, fellowship divine. Oh, what blessed is communion. Oh, Jesus is a friend of mine friendship with the Jesus fellowship divine oh what blessed sweet communion Jesus is a friend of Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's good to have a friend. But sometimes when we choose the persons to be our friends, they are our frenemies. But where Jesus is concerned, he's always a friend. A friend when we are having good times. And he's a friend when we are having all the seemingly bad times. He's a friend. He's a friend when we are well. And he's a friend when sickness lays us low. And to top it all, 
is a friend even when death is past. Which person do we have as a friend when death is past? When they take our body to the burial spot and say, I love you well. But Jesus loves you best. That's the best friend we need to have. Because even after death, he's our friend. And if he's our friend, we look forward to greet him on heaven's shore. Hallelujah. But if we are not his friend, if he's not our friend, we cannot greet him on heaven shore because we're not going to reach heaven shore. So I would encourage us today, despite all that is happening to us in this world, as Ephesians 6 verses 10 and 11 states, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. It is important that we be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we should put on the old armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And the wiles of the devil are anything that the devil throws at us. Right? We should be able to stand. Right? And Paul encourages us to be strong in the Lord. Because we want to meet him on heaven shore. If the rapture doesn't come early, many of us will not be here. We would have been dead and gone. Right? But let us be faithful brethren. Right? And Paul has been encouraging us. And in the last part, he said, finally, finally. Finally. I have been warning you to do this, to do that, and to do the other. But finally, I am warning you, I'm encouraging you. To be strong in the Lord. Brethren, let us be strong in the Lord. It's very difficult now to be strong in the Lord. It's difficult. But you see, if we put on the old armor, if we put on the old armor, then we can stand. So let us put on the old armor and stand. And let us make sure that Jesus is our friend. Let us ensure that he is our friend. Because we want to meet him on heaven, sure. Yes, we want to meet him on heaven's shore. So let us be strong in the Lord. Let us put on the whole armor, not just a part of the armor. Let us put on the whole armor and be strong in him so that we will be able, right, to combat all the fiery darts of the enemy. Because he's going to come. He's definitely going to fight in one way or the other. He's going to fight. The young, he's going to fight. He's going to fight the old. He's going to fight all of us. So let us be strong in the Lord. And may God bless and prosper you. Now, the choir is going to come forth. After which, we will be asking the speaker, who is also a Sunday school personnel, to speak to us. Bless the Lord, everybody. 
Hallelujah. Can we just worship the Lord in the house today? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As we face our challenges today, it's the end time and the devil is out like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But we come with an encouragement for your spirit today that you are not to get adjusted to this world, that you are to stay true to Jesus because if you faint not, you will be a part of the best that is to come. Hallelujah.
have to speak to us none other than evangelist Graham God bless hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. the best is yet to come when I walk through heaven's gate for the first time I see Jesus I can hardly wait. He showed me to my mansion. Say, child, this is your home. But I have a feeling in my heart. The best is yet to come. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I greet our pastor, Pastor Simmons, our president, all our other officers and our brethren and our visitors i greet you in jesus name praise the lord god is good on the worst of days god is good i listen to the testimonies real testimonies real people real pain but the best is yet to come i have been serving god for quite a bit for some time now and there have been rocky times, but God is good. It is because of his mercies and his goodness why I can stand here before you this afternoon. Because he knows how to keep me. He's a young woman keeper. He's an old woman keeper. He's able to keep. And today I'd like us to look at Acts chapter 12. From verse 1 to 17. Acts chapter 12 from verse 1 to 17. Now about that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church and he killed James the brother of John with the sword and because he saw it pleased the Jews he proceeded further to take Peter also then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers 
to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda, and when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they say, Then said they, It is an it's angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went unto another place. We'll also read Psalm 91. And verse 15 to the end. Psalm 91 from verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him. And show him my salvation. At this time I ask Elder Myers to pray God's blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Elder Myers. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So the word of God comes to us. And if I shall use a theme today, I would say, call him up. Just three words. Call him up. Thank you, Jesus. Now, as children of God, we face various challenges. We look to others when it, our situation overwhelms us. We call on our friends and sometimes if we are desperate enough, we call on our enemies because I borrowed money from my enemies better than no money at all. Thank you, Jesus. So sometimes even though people who we say we don't check for, 
when we're really in a bind, we call on them. And we seek help by calling face to face, by text, by email, by letter. By, sometimes we send a message with somebody who I shall call a broker. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody who we feel can influence the other party. Thank you, Jesus. And some problems we face, we can solve them on our own. We have different strategies to solve them. But when the problem is too big and we cannot solve it, then we call for backup. Thank you, Jesus. But there are times when even with calling for backup from our friends and our relatives, the problems still stand, frustrating us getting us agitated and causing our faith to struggle. Today, the Lord has said, call him up. Call him up. Thank you, Jesus. He is a present help in trouble. He is an on-time God. He is acquainted with our problems. He, has, he was subject to like problems as we are facing. Thank you, Jesus. Call him up. Some problems, we, we try everything and we cannot solve them. When we seek help from others, we have to think about the time of the day. Thank you, Jesus. We have to think about who we can call for such a problem. Because the, the person who you call for money, you may need a, have another problem that that person cannot solve it. Thank you, Jesus. And vice versa. So you have to know the right person at the right time. Thank you, Jesus. And you have to understand the language that the person speaks. For sometimes you have to use the right words. To get across to the person. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you want the money to buy food, but you feel that if you tell the per person it's money, you're not going to get it. So you say, boy, I have an a, a, a urgent need. I have an emergency. That is how you get across to the person. For you need help. Hallelujah. Jesus is our help. The word says some trust in chariots and some in horses. Some people have a lot of friends with a lot of influence and a lot of money. But many of us, we have found it on our knees. We have been able to fight our battles on our knees because we don't have a lot of friends with money. But Jesus said the cattle on a thousand hills are his. If he were hungry, he would not have told you. He said, I, I have gone to prepare a place for you. And if I have gone to prepare a place for you, I will come back for you. I am coming back for you. So wait up for me. I'm coming back for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So you have to know the right time. You have to know the right place. You have to know the right language. The distance. You have to know the protocol. There is a certain thing called protocol. That you want help from somebody. But you have to consider whether you can approach a person now. To give you an example. Yesterday morning I got up and... After my husband left and I closed back the gate, there was a strange dog in my yard. So I said to him, come out of my yard and go. By the time I reach around the back, I hear the dog screaming. When I came back to the front, there is a gate I have to the road. And it has a certain spike in it. The dog gets caught in the, in the gate. I couldn't get him out. And he couldn't help himself. And by this time, it was some minutes to five. Thank you, Jesus. I said, there is nobody who I can call to help me at this time. But I began to say, Jesus. 
I began to say, send help, Jesus. Because if the dog dies in my gate, I'm going to have to find somebody somewhere to take him out and to bury him. So it's easier that I find somebody to remove him while he's alive. Thank you, Jesus. So I start thinking, and there is only one person close enough that I think could help me. Because the individual who shall remain nameless helped me one time before. Hallelujah. My husband is far away. I can't call him. I'm not going to come now. So I'm thinking about the right person. Minister 5 on a Saturday morning. Thank you, Jesus. And so I said, no, I can't call. I'm not calling her this time of the month. Not calling her this time. But 20 past 5, I said, no, the dog is going to die there. So I picked up the phone and I dialed the number. Thank you, Jesus. The phone rang quite a few times, telling me that the lady is sleeping. But eventually she answered and yes, she was sleeping. The phone woke her up. Thank you, Jesus. I put my situation to her and she said, no. But eventually she came. She and her husband came. And they were able, two of them working together to get out the dog. And that was how I got my peace. Thank you, Jesus. So you need to call him up. You need to call him up. Now, this, the scripture we read in Acts, Peter was thrown into prison for doing the work of God. The brethren, their help was limited, it seems. But they knew how to pray. Thank you, Jesus. And a group of them gathered together on a location and they started to pray. They prayed for the first hour and it seemed like nothing was happening. Thank you, Jesus. As they continued to pray, I can imagine their faith started to waver. I wonder if Peter is going to be delivered. I wonder if God is going to come true. I wonder if somebody should go and say something. I wonder if we should try something else. Thank you, Jesus. But they continued calling. Prayer is your way to reach Jesus. And yes, he will hear. Because Psalm 91 says, He shall call upon me and I will answer him. More than that, I will be with you in trouble. Not all of our friends will come when we are in trouble. But Jesus said, I will be with you because trouble is going to come. And I am prepared to back you. So call on me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So the brethren were praying and they continued calling. And during all this time, the angel of God sent his angel to deliver Peter. Now there was such a tight security. When you go to um, that prison down by downtown there. GP, maximum security prison. I remember I, I, there was a couple of years ago, I don't know if many of you remember, when someone from among us was down there and we had to go down there and me go take myself and after they say, no, okay, you can go in. Me walk and go across to where he was. And the, the, the guard said, no, you can't. that's not how it goes down here. You have to wait. Although they said to you, you can go now. You don't just walk across. Somebody has to escort you across. And so the prison that Peter was confined to was a maximum security prison. And some of us, the situation that we are um, barricaded in, it seems like we are in maximum security because we don't see any way out. None of our friends who we call can solve the problem. None of our family members cannot solve the problem. But there is a friend in Jesus. He is everything to me. 
my God can walk through maximum security prison. The security was so tight that it, in addition to the, 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 the outside security, he was chained between two guards. Somebody outside of that little place here, watch. And then uh, when you go to GP, there's a, a high fence. And it has spikes all around. So you can just jump that fence. But some people dare to break through that security. But the prison that Peter was confined to was intended for him to be destroyed, for him to die in that prison. It was not expected that he would be out. Because when he came out, he said, God, I thank you for delivering me from the expectation of the Jews. Because everybody was sure this was the end. Thank you, Jesus. So now you are faced with a situation as a child of God. And when you assess your situation, you find yourself in a maximum security prison. It could be death. You know, see, no, we have to pay the bill. It could be your job. You feel that they are going to take some action against you, whether right or wrong. It could be you are at home and your landlord gives you notice. You don't see any way to come out. You don't see any way to, to, to pay the rent. It could be that as a young person, you are faced with your, 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 your struggles, your, your intimate struggles, emotional struggles, and your enemy is saying the only way out, there's a carrot being dangled. Somebody has made an offer, and the enemy said that's your only way out. But the blood of Jesus is against that offer. I rebuke it in Jesus' name because as a child of God, God has many different options to deliver you. You're praying at night and you're praying at day. And every night, every time you go on your knees, the de demons tremble. Your God has many ways to deliver you, but call him up. You call him last night and you feel like he didn't answer. While they were praying for Peter, they had no knowledge that Peter was released from prison. They had no knowledge that Peter was outside. Even when the damsel said, Peter, it is Peter's voice. I hear Peter calling out. They said, no, you are mad. The damsel said, yes, it is Peter. I recognize his voice. They said it must be his angel. Thank you, Jesus. That's what happened when you call him up. Especially as a church, as a group, where two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus. And you call him up. He's bound to answer. He is bound to answer. And sometimes the answer doesn't come in the way that we think. Or at the time when we think, but it's going to be on time. But call him up. Thank you, Jesus. So Peter was released from maximum security prison. And Peter was sent out. And not even the brethren who were praying could believe that Jesus can deliver from maximum security prison. Thank you, Jesus. So... Peter, the angel came and she delivered him. The, deliv he or she, the angel delivered him and said, bind on your shoes, your sandals. Follow me. And even Peter himself couldn't believe that he was being delivered from prison. But he thought it was a dream. Thank you, Jesus. So our God can break through picket fence. Our God can do the impossible, but call him up. And all you have to do is to go down on your knees.
But there are times when where you are, it is not appropriate to go down on your knees. But if you say Jesus, he will hear. I remember Hannah, when Hannah had her need because she was barren. And they mocked her and she knew that she couldn't continue like that. Hannah went and she prayed and they saw her mouth move. But no words were uttered. But God heard her. She called him up and he heard. Thank you, Jesus. There is no special way to reach our God. All you need to do is to get into his presence. For in God's presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Thank you, Jesus. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. He said, call upon me. Sometimes you call your friends and they're tired of you. Sometimes the phone is turned off. Sometimes the system is not operating. You call somebody, they have the phone in their hand, but it's not ringing. Sometimes they don't have their phone with them. But our God is a present help. And it is never out of time. It is never inappropriate to call our God. Central's never busy. Always on the line. You can hear from heaven almost any time. Because only you can cause that blockage. Call him up. Even as you sit in church, call him up. When you are standing before the enemy, call him up. His name is Jesus. And anytime you call him, any time of the day or night, any time you could be at work, at your desk, at the machine, you could be in the bathroom, on the toilet, sitting down, and you need help, call him up. You have a financial problem. Your God is not going to tell you you come last week already. Your God is going to answer. Call upon me. I will answer you. I am prepared to help you when you're in trouble. Thank you, Jesus. I remember in 2014, I, I had a problem. We were about to travel the next morning before day. And... Cut a long story short, when I realized there was a fire that broke through my back fence, I don't know who lit the fire even to know. I tried calling my friend's husband, is a fireman. Tried calling him, got the number mixed up. His wife couldn't remember his phone either, his phone number. But I radioed Central. I said, Jesus. I remember that same morning before it happened. When I woke up in the morning, the voice said to me, he, you, you shall, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. And the voice repeated, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Back then, we had a drought in the community. The water pressure was so very low. The fire was running. By the time I put the hose one side, it was running to the next side. And I couldn't get the fireman. Hallelujah. I radioed Central. I was standing in my backyard. But Central never busy. Central violate every protocol. Thank you, Jesus. And as I radioed Central, I called my neighbor. I said, put over your hose and help me. She said, the hose is not tall enough. But Jesus was tall enough. Hallelujah. And so when I, I called, shortly after I heard a fire truck. Thank you, Jesus. And I know that my, my, my friend's husband know my location. So there's no searching. And in no time, the, the fire truck was there. Putting out the fire. Because I remember that he told me when I woke up the morning, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. And it was repeated for emphasis. And when I called on him, he never let me down. So this morning, the Lord is sending a message to the church. I don't know your problem. 
you don't know my problem, but we all have problems. Problems of all sorts. Some of them we have to use protocol to go to our friend. As, an, as I said that, I remember when Bishop Robotham, Bishop W.S. Robotham was alive. And that, that is so long ago, because he died in 2013. I was in a financial problem one morning, and I, as a matter of fact, from the night before, I had a bill to pay. And it had to pay the next morning, and I had no way to get the money. And something said, call Bishop and ask him to lend you the money. And I said, no, but this is a lot of money I need. I can't ask Bishop to lend me this amount of money. And short, long story short, I was in turmoil in the night. Couldn't have no peace because I owe this bill and I don't have the money to pay it. And next morning when I called him, the phone was misoperating and I didn't get him. And so I said, protocol or no protocol, I'm going up to his house. So I'm saying that because our God, there is no inappropriate time to call him. And I went to the bishop, and when I put my case to him, he said, Sister, you're in luck. I have a whole lot of money on me here now, and I shouldn't be having so much money on me. The bishop gave me the loan, and he never even asked me to sign a slip. So when you call up your God, there is no time that is inappropriate. And there is no situation that is inappropriate either. Because some of the needs that we have, we can ask pastor. But we can't to ask Elder Davis because it's just out of place. It's just out of order based on the, the need that we have. And we probably can ask Elder Davis, but can't start to approach pastor with that need. But when you call up our God, the most intimate situation, the most impossible, the, the, the most concrete wall that you are facing, the most, uh, you, you have a, a, a rock, um, you have a roadblock. Thank you, Jesus. And the enemy said, this is where you're going to die. But our God is able. Our God is mighty and strong. Our God can deliver. Our God can heal cancer. Our God can heal. Sister has her problem there with her. She had to have therapy. And the doctor says, I can only do so much, but God can do so much more. So call him up and tell him like it is. For our God is acquainted with our problem. There is nothing too intimate that we cannot tell him. God knows your problem. God sees your tears. And God knows when you think that, boy, I've been struggling with this a long time I, I can't face anybody else you can't touch God he can be touched with the feelings of your infirmities he can you can reach him you can prostrate on your face and still reach him you can tell him like it is call him up thank you Jesus even now, you may be sitting in a congregation and you're having a little headache. You didn't tell anybody. But God knows that you are worried about your problem because you come to church, but when you go home back, you are thinking, hallelujah, that the problem is there waiting on you. But if you talk to your God, if you call him up, even now, hashama. When you get home, the problem gone. When you go home, the problem melt like butter. Yakondo, shabu, satolomasa. God can help. God can help. Many, many years ago, I, I, I was so very broke and just get up every day and broke and can't manage. And, and I said, listen to me now. I'm going to run out poverty out of my house. Come out and don't come back. Come out of my house and don't come back. 
And from then my cupboards have been filled. God can do the same for you. If you call him up, he will answer. He said he will be with you in trouble. Not like your friends who run when you're faced with trouble. Call him up. He is a specialist for your problem and for your problem and for your problem. Call him up when you're faced with a giant. Our God is a giant killer. Hallelujah. Our God is a giant killer. Lord Jesus, our God can take off chariot wheels. Our God can make a way through the Red Sea. Our God can answer. He is an on-time help. He is a present help in trouble. Thank you, Jesus. Our God will fight for us. Um, Exodus 14 says, God will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Sometimes when God is fighting the battle, say, you, you shut up your mouth. You don't even say anything. Let me just, ah, Shama, let me just fight the battle for you. God said, I come to help. I come, I send help. So call me up. Depend on me. Give me a problem and don't take it up back when you're going through the door. Call me up. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's no special time to call God. There's no special way to call God. You call God if you talk loud. Some of your friends say you talk too loud. Whisper, whisper. If you talk loud, if you whisper, God hears. But when you're praying some of your prayer, you have to start whispering. Because sometimes it becomes a missile. So you have to whisper and tell God. And he's a confidential God. He hears. You don't need any special place to call on God. Don't let any, Yes, we must come to church and associate with each other. But you can pray at home too. God hears the at-home prayer. God hears the prayer when, when you drive. I remember, you know, God has been so good to me. I remember about in 20, 2009. I had a particular problem and I was driving the Honda at that time and I, I was going home the day and I was angry and I closed my door. I was driving home and I started to talk to God. Hallelujah. And I started to spell out things and I started to tell him. I said, listen to me. Sit down here and don't move. Hallelujah. And he, I, he gave me audience. And things that I wouldn't talk in church because you can't, you can't pray all the things in church. You can't spell it out. I spell it out because it was me alone and God in that car. My windows were up and I started to pour out. Hallelujah. The very next day, God answered the prayer and I, if I were to solve it, I wouldn't solve it that way. But it was solved. My prayers were answered. And, and, and there was a need that I had. I never had the money to do it. But when God answered the prayer, next day I, I called my friend. I said, pay a bill for me using your credit card because mountain are going to have money. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Call him up. Hallelujah. Call him up, brethren. Hallelujah. Call him up. He can hear. Our God is not deaf. His hands are not short. His ears are not heavy. His, his, his money can spend. Well, if you ask God for a thousand dollars, he's not going to give you a hundred dollars. If, if, if you who are natural know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly father, he knows what you have need of. And he's going to supply your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He is going to answer. Call him up. Three words. Call him up. Remember, when you face with your challenge, 
this week and um, in the future, you may be faced with Goliath, but call him up. Call on Jesus and he will answer and he will deliver you. God bless you. Call him up. Many times you start out with your prayer and you're shaky. Many times you start to reason with yourself and you're saying, will you answer this? But just continue till you gain confidence and then you know that he reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns. Call him up. Many a person that I speak to about God and about his help, they are not even Christians. And when I start to talk with them, tomorrow they can come back and give you a testimony. A positive testimony. So what about us? God, no, we know God speak me. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Call him up. Your situation is there. Right now. Right now you have your own situation. Right now. You know, many times you have to get, grab a hold of yourself. Sometimes it's like you have to grab a hold of God and say, God, you don't see me. You don't see all my situation dire. You're not helping me. You're not bringing me out. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give me that testimony. Allow the testimony to be positive. Oh, glory to God. Let the Eden go and rage. Oh, hallelujah. But fix my situation. I remember there was a time when I wasn't talking to God. I was saying to God, oh, me not feel you. Oh, but there came a time when I continued to talk to God. Then I start to feel him. Then I start to feel his goodness. And I start to see him running up and down. Hallelujah. And, oh, glory to God. I don't think you understand the God you serve. Call him up. Call him. Oh, it, not, it, it don't matter what other persons are doing. Yes, yeah, sister says some of the things you can't talk about in church. But when you get into your own closet, and sometimes your closet is just the toilet. But that is where you call him up. Because that is what you have. Sometimes in your workplace you want to call him because something happened. But you can't shout and go on because of protocol. But you run around the back. Or you run and you find a little corner. And you call him up. Call him up, man. Call him up. Call him up. Call him up. Call him up. Many of, many of your physical counterparts, many of your friends can't help you. Uh, you talk with them and you ask them and you say, boy, I may have a little situation. But God now has no situation. Call him up. And I know that he will bring you through. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. We'll end uh, with the singing of 256 when we all get to heaven because now we are suffering wait until you reach our heaven and you're going to see how different things are going to be for us hallelujah hallelujah 256 wondrous love of Jesus sing his mercy and his grace in the mansion bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus, we will sing 
and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway clouds will overspread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a sign when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we will sing and shout the victory let us then be true and faithful trust in serving every day just one glimpse of him in glory will the storms of life repeat oh when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we will sing and shout the victory all right, before we sing the last verse, I am sure there is some prayer that we want to lift to God. We want to call him up because there are, let me tell you, man, as long as we live in this life, we are going to have our situation. And some of those situations are dire situations. Sister spoke about many of the situations that assailed her. And as she preached, or as she taught, or as she exhorted, you, in your mind, you could be saying, I remember when I was going through this. I remember when I was going through that. I know, I know I'm going through this. And I'm going through that. And, 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 and I want to call him up. But at the same time, even though I'm going to call him up, I want some people to help me to call him up. So come. Come. And it don't matter where you sit, whether you are a Christian or you are a sinner or whatever your situation may be. As I said to you before, many of the persons who have spoken to, who would have had issues as I speak to them about the goodness of God with the belief that they themselves have as you speak and you would have pointed to situations that would have happened to people. They start to believe and things happen for them. As I say, much more you much more you hallelujah. so we hallelujah are going to be praying as we sing the last verse will you please come so that we can pray with all you know your situation you know what is happening to you and sometimes it's not even you sometimes it's people who are connected to you people who, 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 who are tied to you there are those who are, who are who are sick and it may not be you who, 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 who is feeling that condition or who is going through that condition it may be it may be your friend it may be your daughter it may be your son or i hear somebody was talking about their their i don't know if it's their grandson or their son or what the person is to them and they were out there in canada and of course you know they are there alone but you know that as you call him up on the behalf of persons, he's going to answer you. He's faithful. He is faithful. I don't care what you want to say. And the other day I was fretting about a, a particular condition. And I said I was fretting about the condition. And I was saying, God, look at my situation. It don't look so good. And, you know... After I looked at my condition and I'm talking to God, when I look him, he, he was able to show me, no man, your situation is great. Yeah. So I personally know from a, from a personal perspective, Praise from God. personal experience, God has been good to me and he has been good to people who I am associated with because they call on him. Praise call him God. up. Call him up. Praise oh, God. glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will be whole. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a... 
that will be when we all say Jesus. We will sing and shout the victory. And as we look at what is going to happen then, God is still able to keep us now. And that's why we are calling him up. Today, Sunday school service. Let us remember on June, I'm sorry, on March the 24th, Sunday school Sunday, the message was call him up. And as I know, you are going to call him up, whatever your situation may be. Some of the situation dark and dire, you know. Some of them tough. And, and, and sometimes within ourselves, we are saying, God, Mr. Far gone, that you can't make it no make no sense to call you up. But anyway, you take it, call him up. Call him up. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Lord, this afternoon, we come to you having heard the word that we should call you up. Because there are times, you know, when we know that we should call you. But sometimes we need to be encouraged. You know, sometimes we need to hear a word. Sometimes something needs to be pulled out of the hat and remind us that we should call on you. Because the scripture declare, call on you and you will answer. And so today, Lord, just with confidence, given the reminder that we have gotten, we are calling on you. Lord, we have some situation that are dire. We have some sinful situation going on. And sometimes, Lord, it's not even the sinful situation that is going on with me, but some sinful situation that is going on with people who I depend on. Lord Jesus, sometimes the situation is so dire, and it's like, Lord Jesus, because I'm a hunger, because I'm a poverty, I have to depend on some people, Lord. But God, I'm calling on you today that you change that situation and help me that I will step up boldly and that those who support us will, oh, glory to God, be legitimate. Lord, some, there are some sicknesses that we have, the hypertension, the diabetes, the cancer, oh God, the migraine, the headache that is so constantly with us, Lord Jesus. And it's like we pray every day and nothing not happen. But Lord Jesus, my God, I'm calling you again, on you again. The, 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 the preaching says that I should call you up. Lord Jesus, my pocket is empty. There is nothing in it. When I go home the sea, the Lord Jesus is all the water in my pot, but I'm calling you up so that you can deliver me from poverty, deliver me from starvation. Oh, glory to God! Not only starvation, Lord Jesus, in the physical sense, but spiritual starvation because some of us are starved spiritually. We are not taking all, Lord Jesus, of the word. So, Lord Jesus, we starve. Oh, glory to God. Some of us will suffer because of lack of knowledge because we don't want to find the knowledge, Lord Jesus, so that we may be helped. So, Lord Jesus, the word is everywhere nowadays. But, Lord Jesus, we refuse. We, refuse. we even pick up the food and instead of looking at Lord of your word and listening to your word, we're listening to some foolish TikTok or somebody send us some Wi-Fi messages and all we are doing is giggling and laughing and we forget that we should call you up so that you can fix our situation. Oh, glory to your name. God, give us the vision that we'll be able to go out some more for you, that we'll be able to worship and adore you, that we'll be able to encourage others in you, Lord. Lord, just, we're calling you up for this because here we sing when we all get to heaven. And all of us were here singing when we all get to heaven. And Lord, just, some things that we do will not allow all of us to get to heaven. So Lord Jesus, my God, my Savior, I am asking you to save us afresh. I am asking you to renew your spirit within us, Lord Jesus. I am asking to continue to worship and to adore you and to give you the glory and to give you the honor that you so deserve Lord, just sometimes this it's coming like foolishness as we listen, Lord, just and we eat our teeth, and in our minds we are elsewhere. It's as if, Lord, just our bodies are here, but our mind is somewhere else. And so, Lord, just we do not give you our total and full attention. But today, Lord, just we are calling on you. Oh, 
We're calling upon you, Lord. We're calling upon you that you put us, Lord, just in a place where our minds will be stayed on you, where our body will, will, be, will be with you, where, Lord, just we'll be able to concentrate on you and we'll be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, you see our various needs that we call on you for. Oh, God. Sometimes all we get so comfortable in the position that we are in. We not feel any ache. We not feel any pain. Oh Lord, we are we are doing well emotionally. We are doing well um, um, phys um, physically. We are we're, we're doing well psychologically. We are even doing well economically. And we feel good in the place that we are. And we do. it's like we don't need you. But Lord, it don't matter where we are. Even, even salvation, Lord, we need you to give us. And that's the most important thing. Because we may feel comfortable now. But in a little while, Lord, just when you should put in your appearance, that is when some of us, our discomfort will come. So, Lord, help us to call on you. Especially, Lord Jesus, to be saved. And if there are any amongst us, Lord Jesus, who need to be saved, I pray, dear God, that you will touch them. You will open their minds to you, Lord Jesus, that they will run to you. Because after all, yes, we come here and we sing and we shout and all of that and everything is good. And we know we're going to get to heaven. But there are those, Lord Jesus, who are outside of God and Christ. And we pray for them. There are family members who are outside of God and Christ. There are family members who make all sorts of excuses. Some of our family members, when you talk with them, they say you are being judgmental. But Lord, I pray that you will give us the unction. You'll give us the strength. You'll give us the words to speak to people who figure that we are casting them down. We are putting them down because our interest is in their soul. God, be with us today. Be with us from now and forever. Help us to always call on you, Jesus, because we know you will answer. Hear our prayer now, Lord, and dismiss us with your choices of blessings. Have mercy upon us now, we pray in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, Amen, 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 Amen. And thanks for coming. And just remember to call on him, and he will answer. Hallelujah.